Hello and welcome to Kema Freak. My name is Kemi Omorube. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make this dress, kimono, bubu, call it what you may, agbata. So let's get right into it. Please subscribe if you haven't and let's get to work. Let's start with a quick walk on the pattern for this dress. I have already marked the top margin here and I took out the neckline 3.5 inches by 4 inches. You can work with what you want and I'm marking out the shoulder there which is 7.5 inches half of my shoulder width. So from there onward I marked the shoulder to waist which is the half length of 17 inches and from the waist to the hip line 9 inches. And the full length of this dress will be 39 inches. Please do well to work with your own measurement. From the point I marked for the shoulder, I came down by one inch and connected it to the tip of the neckline and drew that slanted line all the way to the edge of my paper. My paper is 20 inches wide, by the way, and that just worked for what I wanted for this. Now you have to decide on the width of the bubble dress you want. So my neckline is already 3.5 inches wide. So I'll just put my tape at the tip of the neckline so I can take out the rest of the measurement. So this bubble dress I'm making is 18 inches wide. So I placed my tape at 3.5 inches and took the rest of the measurement on the slanted line. From this point you can draw a straight line downwards so that the side seam of the dress will just be straight all the way down but then I didn't want the same width <coughs> excuse me I didn't want the same width on the hemline so I took 15 inches on the hemline and you just need to be sure that the width you have is wider than the hip circumference divided by 4 so mine will have been about 12 inches but then that extra is added for more freedom now i'll be connecting the line from the sleeve all the way down on the neckline i'll be having an opening along the center front and it's just about five inches long and it will be half inch wide on fold so that when we open up the fabric we'll have a one inch wide opening right there so but when i'm transferring this to fabric i won't need to cut out this half an inch because that will serve as the same allowance that way the opening won't become too wide than i intend for it to be now i'm marking the back neckline on the same pattern and it's still the same width 3.5 inches but this time it is one inch deep this done i'll go ahead to cut out this pattern first i'll be cutting that of the back okay because the neckline is not as deep as the front and once i'm through with that i'll cut out the front but before then we are marking out the yoke the front yoke for this and I chose a width of three inches and I'm just dotting the dots all the way down to the neckline. So you have to work creatively here. Just mark out what you want on your dress. Basically, there are no rules to this. So I took out from a depth of 11 inches from the base of the neckline and I'll just use my paint to highlight this so we see it more clearly. Once I'm done cutting out the pattern for the back, I'll place it on fabric, a folded fabric with the center back on fold. And here I'm adding seam allowances, one inch at the side, half an inch at the top and neckline, and then two inches along the hem. Here I'm done cutting out the back and I cut out the front neckline as well and the slit along the center front and I'll just be placing it on fabric again and cutting it out. The fabric for the front is also on fold and I added the same allowance as I did to the back piece.
here is the yoke for the front piece i just decided to play around a little bit so i won't be making something symmetrical like this so i had to transfer it to another paper on fold so i can mark out another type of yoke for the front so i'm just playing around with my pen there to get the right shape I will be satisfied with so just go ahead and explore explore creatively and come up with something lovely I'll be placing this on fabric and adding half an inch allowance all around it and for this slit right here, I'll just be cutting it. Okay, I won't be cutting out any piece of fabric. I'll just slit it downward so I can sew it in by that half an inch to give a one inch wide slit. Here is the front and back yoke and I have ironed in fusible interfacing on both. Note how I just made the interfacing half an inch less okay so i didn't add sewing allowance to the fusible interfacing and i went ahead to fold the seam allowance inward and for this part that has curvy sides i just put little snips little notches along that part to help it relax properly while sewing in the first method i'll be sewing the front and back piece together along the shoulder sleeve line by half an inch on both sides and this is what i have once that is done i'll go ahead to do the same thing for the yoke sewing the two together along the shoulder line by half an inch i will ensure that the seam allowance along that shoulder line is opened while sewing it just gives it a neater look okay so this is what i have now i will lay this on the wrong side of the fabric okay so the wrong side of the fabric facing the right side of this facing okay so hold it this needs to be held down with pins so it doesn't keep shifting around and i'll be sewing the neckline by half an inch seam allowance from the front all the way to the back and to the front again then once I'm through, I'll turn it inside out. So here we have it. Ensure that you put notches on the curvy part and also the sharp point right here. This just helps the seam relax properly. Once that is done, turn it inside out and top stitch on the yoke by about one eighth of an inch all the way around okay so for the second method you're going to treat the front and the back separately okay so i have attached the yoke for the front here and sewn the neckline place my notches now i'll be turning this inside out and ironing my yoke properly okay because you need it to lay flat on the fabric so once that is done i'll hold the yoke onto the fabric with pins to stabilize it then go ahead to sew i'll be top stitching on the yoke the edge of the yoke by half or one eighth of an inch now this is what i have for the front I'll just set this aside so we can do some little work on the back which essentially is repeating the entire process for the back yoke sewing by half an inch and putting in the notches but at this point I'll go ahead to top stitch 
on the fabric okay i will be making the stop stitch in a way that the same allowance is towards the fabric this is because the yoke is what you're going to be seeing on the outside not it won't be on the inside like a facing right once it is done i'll turn the yoke inside out and go give this a good press like i did for the front done that here and i'm holding the facing in place after which i'll be top stitching by one eighth of an inch it's now time to join the two pieces together along the shoulder line so i'll be laying the front on the back piece right side facing each other and ensuring that the yoke stop at exactly the same point for the both sides and we'll be stitching these two together by half an inch after joining the front and back piece together this is what you have you can go ahead and overlock the same allowance on the inside so i'll just be turning this inside out and we'll be sewing the sides together so i need a sleeve opening here and i decided to work with nine inches so from that nine inches mark i'll be sewing the sides by one inch which i have done here and i have the sleeve opening so next i'll take this onto the ironing table and iron in this same allowance because i don't want to sew with a sewing machine on this side i'll be using a hemming glue to steam press so you need to first press before putting in the hemming glue and steam pressing again just to allow it lay flat properly here is the sleeve looking really nice and flat so the next thing I'll be doing now will be to do something similar on the hem. So I have a 2 inches wide seam allowance here and I'll be taking 1 inch and folding the other 1.5 inches. So once that is done, the dress is ready. So this is what we have at the end of the day. I hope you give this a try. It's really easy and straightforward and very fast to make. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to drop your comment. If you try this out, please tag Kemafric Fashion on Instagram. Bye.